Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to cover some formatting uh, in Word. And I'm going to show you specifically how to use numbering. So numbering of your headings. So there's in, so if you go to the home tab in the ribbon and in the styles box, you'll see there's different headings there. Um, and we'll discuss all, how all these things flow together as well as adding page numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do, I like to go to layout and make the margins narrow, because then you can actually optimally use the space on your pages. Okay, so for a report such as, uh, as you will be writing for 382, you usually would use uh, what we would call an article style numbering. So that means your highest number in your headings, or numbering your headings, is a one. So this will be your first heading. And then you would have, so subsequently, you would have a second heading. Second heading. So just to show what I did here, if I take that out, I typed one, and you need to put a full stop. Then you put a space, and then it automatically, Word starts numbering for you from there. Now the problem is, so you keep clicking enter at the end of these lines and then you keep on getting numbers, but that's quickly evaded by just saying enter again, and then it stops. And then if you go on, let's say, you want to put, so you have some text here, some ha 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 noise, and you want to put your third heading over here. Then you just type three and you go on from there. So this is the third Okay. Now, um, what do we want to do? So we want to connect this heading to the heading there. Because you see, the moment we start clicking, so if you click there and you scroll to there or move your mouse to there, it changes that and the numbering changes again. So at the moment, your heading over there is not connected to your numbering style in your document. So the way you want to fix that is I'm just going to undo control Z is you want to now right click say update heading one to match section and there you see now it's automatically the numbering is incorporated into your heading so it says one dot that thing there also this is a heading you want to put that there and you format it as such you just click on what you want to make the heading and you make that a heading. Then this little arrow will show up when you hover over these things. You see, for example, it's not there when I'm there because that is just normal text there in our styles box. Okay. So now, of course, this looks very ugly. We don't want to use it as such. So the first thing I usually do is now you click on the number. So then the numbers are going to highlight, and it's going to highlight all the ones that are connected to each other. So this is a what you call a list. So there's a list of numbers here. <clears throat> you right click here and you say set numbering or uh, sorry adjust list index that's what you want to go so what have we done we've right clicked on the number we said adjust list index indents so the number position at the moment is at 0.63 centimeters so that is about there so that means where that is but we want to align it to the left here so you change number position to zero and I like to say, follow number with a space. So that means there's no longer a tab. So you see that thing means a tab is what you go is, is a tab. So now we want to change that to a space so that it looks like a little dot when you're in the formatting one. Okay, so then we say, oh. yes. So that just updates it to your heading. And you see now all our numbers have shifted to the left. Also, very important here in the paragraph, so in home, in the ribbon, so you see clipboard, font, paragraph, Ensure that this thing is on. And you can always see your paragraph um, <clears throat> marks so that you know, for example, that's an enter, that's a space, and whatever. The, and the tab uh, is the little arrows. And you can remove a tab. Okay. Now, of course, a heading needs to look something quite nice. So let's say, for example, you want to make it bold. So you've highlighted it, you made it bold, and you increase it, and then you can click 
So then while you're highlighted, you go up here, you right click on the heading, you say update heading one to match section. And then it's going to automatically update all your headings to look in this or a similar way. Okay. Alternatively, you could go here. So you right click on this box, you say modify. And then here you can choose the font. Let's say you want to use that. You don't want it to be bold anymore. If you want it italicized. And then it will also update it as such. Okay. <clears throat> so let's keep it bold for now. And we want to type. So just make sure. Now actually when you go from the headings, you no longer have the problem of when you're just normal list numbering. If you're going to say enter, it's going to take you immediately to a normal paragraph style. Also something interesting to note, please note when you're working in paragraphs, rather write the one that says justified. So that keeps your text boxed nicely. If you keep it like this, it's the, that is when you have different lengths of paragraphs um, running here on the sides. Okay, but that's personal choice, so that's not really something I have to worry about. Now, okay, so usually let's make this a good one, a, an actual report. So this would be an introduction. This would be your results. results. And let's say this is the discussion. Now, if you want to change this to a heading one, you just click there. And then immediately your heading is there. Discussion. Um, and then conclusion. I can't spell this morning. Okay. <clears throat> now, so underneath your introduction, you would maybe want to have certain subparagraphs. So 1.1, 1 .1, remember, full stop after the number, then it's going to number. So now you've created what is called a multi level list. So that is one, that is the second heading. And we want to connect this heading to that style. So again, we click there. We say update heading 2. Now heading 2 is that style. Let's make it also just make it bold, for example. So click on it, bold, and there you have it. And now remember what we had to do previously. We had to click and say adjust list in length. And now you see we have a different pop-up box, box because we have defined what is called the multi-level list. So in here, you can see your list levels. So you have one, which is connected to heading one. You have 1.1, 1 .1, which is connected to heading two. And these also are available, but you haven't connected them to any headings yet. I don't like the full stops after the numbers, so I'm going to remove that form from heading one. And I'm going to do the same for heading two. I don't like that full stop. Okay. Then you just, so now we, st we, we look at more, click more, so I'm heading two. So just click on heading two. So we see there's a 1.1, 1 .1. we've removed the full stop. We've clicked on more, just to see, it says restart after level one. So that is level one, which is connected to heading one. So in other words, if I click here, it's going to say 2.1 and not 1.2. Um, it restarts after every heading one, it seems. You can also just have, do this by hand if, you, if you're not following, but this is for to, make it easier for, uh, to easily use Word to do things automatically for you. Again, it's still on the tab character. I like the space. So then you say, OK. <clears throat> now you see it's removed the full stops, and we have what we want. So uh, be, uh, below this, let's say, for example, you're looking at introduction, and we're looking at app sorbens spectroscopy. Um, now you see there's something interesting. So we bolded that, and that is not bolded. So all you want to do is highlight that bold. So again, update. And now from now on, whenever you're using a second heading style, it's going to automatically number, and it's going to say something else. So in secondly, in your introduction, you're going to look at the organic molecules. Okay. Once you get to your results section, let's say, for example, so now you see it immediately numbers it as 2.1. So you just go again. So this is, I don't know, what do you have typically in your results? Let's say just say section 5 or whatever it is. 
And this is how you start building a multi-labeled list. Now, typically you would go up to about three headings. So we have heading one, we have heading two, and now to add a third heading in Word. So there's a default one, but remember, keep it in the style. So stylistically, we've gone bold and large. We've gone 11, so maybe we want to increase this one size, perhaps to 40. Remember, update heading two, update all the headings. You see why it's important to just keep track of this at the beginning. So you make a layout at the beginning, and then you can use it, because now you just need to click. <laughs> you don't have to remember anything, and you're not going to miss number by hand. And the third heading, so typically you go up to 2.1.1. So you see I've done it here, and I've done it for two. So even if I now go and I say update heading here to match that, you see it's going to match it automatically. So, if, so even if we go below 1.2 here and we add this heading, um, that is not supposed to happen. Okay, I'll quickly, that's actually good that that happened now. Let me fix that. Okay. So, no, 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 it's correct. No, it's correct. So 1.2.1. So under 1.2 is 1.2.1. Sorry, my mind just froze. It's really, not even early. Okay. Um, <laughs> but once again, there's a full stop. So how do we change that? Adjust list indents. Check out the full stop. I don't like the tab character. You can remove a little space. And there we go. Okay. And then this heading, let's modify this time this way around. So let's say we want to just slightly bigger than our text because our text is 11. And we want this one italicized. Keeping in what it is. And this is something, some info on organic molecules. Okay. And this one can also be more info on section one. What's the discrepancy I made here? That's always a capital letter, and this one's a small letter. Make sure of little inconsistencies of that. Um, also, I just forgot to save, so please um, just choose. So this is the CMY create two word headings document. Okay. So I think typically those are the number of levels you would go. You might go one more, but typically you don't number larger than 2.1.1. So you're not going to have a 2.1.1.1. You would just have something else. So let's say normal italicized um, thing. And this is our fourth heading type. Now you need to click this little down button so that says more in the styles box, and you see our heading four there, but we don't want that thing to color it. We just want to update it to match this, to match the section. And now we have four defined headings. So that's, you can go through all of them and see as you hover over them, it changes it. There are also other options. And of course, as you add a fourth heading, the fifth heading option comes. If you add a fifth heading, there's a sixth and a seventh and an eighth and a ninth and a tenth and an eleventh. Now, whatever that helps if you have multiple things to number as in your practical manual. That's what I use, but you don't have to worry about that. So typically this is about how much you would need. So now you've set that up, you've connected to your heading. So you type your, your information here, you want to add another heading, you realize, oh my word, so then you don't have to worry because Word is automatically going to update your headings for you. Um, I've changed my mind, I don't want this italicized. I just want it normal. There we go. And that one's just italicized. Okay. <clears throat> Always remember to save. Control S or up there you save. Just do that. I say Control S. You see it every time. I'm, I'm a chronic Control S user. Okay. So we've now done numbering in words. So how to how to add a heading, how to link it to a number, how to modify that number, how to modify your heading types. And now let's say as a, you want to add a table of contents. Okay, so you see I've just put a bunch of enters here. How do I get rid of that? I'm just going to highlight them, click the normal. There's still one left. Click the normal. Okay, and insert a page break. So you want to insert, uh, oh no, sorry, you go layout, you go breaks, and then another section you want to put in a page break. Alternatively, you could use 
control enter that will also give you a code break okay so now but our document starts on this page this is for example our title page so title page whatever it is and let's insert that another page break but now we want to have a table of contents that we want to add here so for that Okay, this is going to take a while. I just could just ignore what I'm doing here. I just need to open my Mendeley so that my references opens more easily. So you go to references. Now I go to table of contents. And you can say, firstly, you can just use automatic table of contents if you're not that skilled in Word. And then it's going to generate a table of contents for you. You can move your own content because it will immediately label it for you. There it has, it's numbered everything. It's every subsequent heading is shifted and it shifted um, up until the 1.2.2 so you see our fourth heading is not included there which is fine and if we add here something let's say add a heading to this number as you see it's empty there and you right click and you see there's a ta update table that comes up you don't want to update the page numbers you want to update the entire table and then you see ah there we've added our heading so everything becomes automated you can easily do that if you don't like this table of contents, you can build a custom table of contents and you can play around here of how to modify it. You can take that out, for example, and you want to show your fourth heading if you would like, and you would like to modify things, you can make things bold so that they appear more otherwise. I'm not going to go through this. This is only if you know how to use Word well. And please go about this. Otherwise, you can just use the normal template Word gives you. And now I want to replace it. So you see now I've immediately changed things and as I put off the paragraph thing, now we have a nice table of contents. Okay, you can also just make a table of contents. But what's the problem here? It's not really in line with what you've done previously. So previously we had bold, normal Calibri, and black. Just and I think that was twenty font. So perhaps I have a twenty font. Insert the space if you would like, and there you have a table of contents. Okay. Just check when you update the table again, update entire table, you see the table of contents will remain there and those things are just going to update your page numbers and your headings as you add them. Okay, now the final thing, we've been talking about page numbers. So now you see the table of contents is saying they, these are all on page three, but there's no page three. You don't, page three is technically, yes, it is page three, but there's no page three. Then what you do is you come, so let's put on our paragraph markers again in the paragraph section. Right click here at the bottom. Usually it's a good, um, so if you right click here at the bottom, say edit footer is going to pop up. Alternatively, you can go to, I just need to remember myself, view, view, draw, insert, footer. There's the option. So if you go insert, it's next to the home, go to footer, page number, bottom of the page. You can choose a plain page number. You can also do all sorts of fancy things like, for example, that or whatever. I'm quite sure some of most of you know how to do this. But just for interest sake, I'm going to show you something that's very important. So, okay, we've inserted the one there. We don't want it that high. And we just want to format it because you see that's Times New Roman. We're using Calibri as our type in font. And we're using 11 as the size. Okay. So now we have, I'm just going to zoom out so then get a fight. Now we have one, two, three. It's not customary to number your title page. It's customary to have to have this technically as number zero. Then also your table of contents. Oh, sorry, your table of contents is also generally not numbered using Arabic numerals. So that's this is this is what we call Arabic numerals. One, two, three. They usually are numbered using Roman numerals. So how do you use that? Okay. So if you struggle with it, you are more than welcome to stop with it now, because this is only for if you really, really want to have. It's fine. You can number your first page. I don't mind. It's not the end of the cat or the death, death of the cat. Um, if you number these things, at least if you have page numbers, then it refers to the correct number in your table of contents. Okay. So to insert or to format your page numbers, this is how you're going to do it. So remember we inserted a page break, so let's take out the page break. 
you go to layout and breaks. Now you see there's a thing called a section break. So insert a section break. Then what we want to do is we want to go to this page break and insert another section break. Okay. So we've inserted two section breaks, not page breaks. So you see it says section break, next page. There's also the option of a continuous one. That means you break it on that page. That is for different functions. For example, if we want to have double columns, single columns on the same page, or all sorts of weird things, landscape and whatever, you can use that. But this is how this works. Okay, so we've inserted two section breaks. Why have we done that? Because now, if you click here at the bottom, you're going to see, so you've double clicked here at the bottom with, next to the page number, you're going to see something pop up in the ribbon that says link to previous. It will be highlighted. Click on that. Make sure it's not linked to the previous one. The reason is, we're going to do the same thing here, link to previous. And then what we want to do is we want to remove the page number on the first page. Because like I said, that's usually number zero, and you don't number it. Then you see this is one is number two. So if this is number zero, then this page can't be number two. But also remember I said it's Roman numerals. So what we want to go is we want to format the page number. We want to change the page, um, the format, to, no, to Roman numerals. And we want to start at I, not double I. We want to start at I. So you see, previously it was continued from previous section. We don't want that. And we want to start it at I. This one starts at I. Okay, so there's no page number there. This one starts at I. This one is still number two. But this is not, not page number two. This is page one, right? Because it's our first Arabic numbered page. So again. We go to format page numbers, so page number, format page numbers, start at one. Okay. And there you have it. Now you have an unnumbered title page. You have your first, ta your table of contents is I. So usually if you ever read a textbook, there's a preface or a list of tables or a list of abbreviations or whatever. These are all called the preface or the front matter of a document. And they contain only the Roman numerals. In this, from the second page onward, or from the first content page, so meaning if you have chapter one, or like we have here, introduction, this is page number one. And that is how you do that. Now, of course, let's just go back to our table of contents. We want to say update table, entire table, and now you see they all display on page one. We have our table of contents on page I, and we have that on page one. Okay. So I hope you've learned something, you've enjoyed it, or maybe you haven't learned something and you already knew this, then it's just a nice refresher or the correct way of doing it. Um, if you did not follow, you're more than welcome. Nobody's going to know if you type 1.1 and just type absorbance. And you just bold it. And you go there and you just put an enter. Okay, well, now mine does it automatically, but you get the idea. So you can just type and enter and then but then you just have to be careful about your numbering always just make sure that your numbering is correct and yeah we're in the next video we'll go from this point on i'll see you there